Up, you guys, it's just virtual fairy godmother, and I am back. Okay, except for I'm not back with another three, I am back with a look bang from Magianos. Okay, so this is my second day in a row having this. I just felt like I had to come share these feats with y'all. Now, it's not gonna look all good because I don't warm it up and I ate some, but it's so worthy of being shown because. So this one made me come back for more the lobster fondue. It's a special going on right now. Mm. Also got like their three for 12. I got chicken Alfredo with chicken on the side and I gave that to patients. And then I, it was supposed to have extra Alfredo y'all. I got ranch for something else that I got and I accidentally poured ranch up in here. Like, so I hope it tastes good. We gonna see. So I got the Alfredo. Um, it came with a Caesar salad, but that's in the refrigerator. And then this is like a sampler. Came with some bruschetta, but I don't eat that. And then mozzarella sticks, fried calamari, and then fried zucchini, which is what the ranch was for. Dang, I forgot the marinara. Hold on. I'll be right back. I meant to warm it up, but oh, well, it's going to be cooked today. Part of the that, but I just warmed up. Um, I just warmed up. Okay, I'm a little nervous for the calamari because I really don't eat meat no more, so it's kind of freaking me out that I'm about to eat it. And then I'm nervous about the fried zucchini, I never had it before, and the mozzarella sticks are mozzarella sticks. So. Lobster fondue, though. It just tastes so good. I can't get enough of it. Like, I want to eat it every day. But yeah, y'all, today's video is going to be about undiscussed expectations in relationships. Mm. Look at that, y'all. A piece of lobster claw. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I bet we would just at the restaurant, it would be so good. Because the bread would be crispy.
<sighs> okay. Let's taste this fried calamari. That is good. 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 My body is good for myself. Let me take this calamari. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It could be a little more seasoned. And fried a little harder. Because it look white. Okay. Let's try to... That's real sticks before they get too cold. I always love my throw sticks. Okay, so into the topic. Into the Yeah, so pretty much my one of the things I've been dealing with is like my fear of rejection. Like I'll put people on like do not disturb if I'm having a conversation with them, just because, like, mm. Because I'm always wondering, like, is somebody going to know how to respond to what I'm saying? Then am I going to know how to respond to what they're saying? So I always have people on Do Not Disturb. it's kind of like um i unexpectedly like or subconsciously just expect people to be like me or to get me or okay i'm scared y'all the zucchini let me not keep saying i'm scared though okay Maybe not with marinara though. Mmm. Tastes good with the calamari. I probably can't eat too much of it though. But, yeah. I feel like me. having this fear of rejection or feeling like my voice would go unheard or feeling like my needs would go unmet or I'll be wasting my time or wasting my breath or be told that my feelings don't matter or I'm over exaggerating. I feel like that created a lot of like silent expectations for the people in my life like instead of voicing how I wanted people to treat me or what I wasn't okay with I would just internalize it and kind of take it personal when people treated me bad or when people didn't understand me or get me or believe me or listen to me which I also noticed is a part of what I have like control issues my shadow side have been like working with me a lot lately in my head I keep hearing I really but yeah 
I've been facing my shadow side a lot. And I feel like control issues kind of stemmed from the fear of rejection. It's like I always try to control the outcome of stuff. Like by I want to control my feelings not getting hurt if somebody don't understand me by not seeing what they text back type. You know, like if you know, you know. But yeah. Having all of this time away from Jonathan, like having time to like really, really reevaluate myself, it really allowed me to take the blame off of our relationship for my unhappiness or mm. look at this. No cheese at all. That's crazy. But it's so easy to blame people for how they treat you instead of asking yourself what you have allowed, what you've tolerated, what you've dismissed. Or what you've just been quiet about. Like, silent expectations almost ruin Jonathan and, Z Jonathan and I's relationship. Coming into our relationship, I was on a spiritual journey. And I was manifesting a husband. Literally. Y'all can watch my video. I had a whole series. I'll link it down below. How I'm manifesting my husband. I was dating around. I was telling my experience. I was learning. I was growing. And I finally cut everybody off and was just like, fuck it. I'm finna just quit my job and take a risk and just do me. And I had to quit for my own sanity. And it gave me so much liberation. It gave me so much power. I felt like it gave me a voice even in my absence. It gave my inner self the permission to just be, to just be in my house for months. Until I bumped into Jonathan. Mind you, I'm in the house for months, me and my baby. And I'm praying. I'm trying to figure shit out. I don't know which way is up. I'm an entrepreneur. And I'm looking to God like, I need help. I can't get the kind of help I need from my parents or my friends. Or I need I need my partner. I need my life partner. I need I need him right now. And I worked hard. I was posting videos every day. I was doing the hard shit. I was cutting toxic niggas off that I really wanted to keep around. But they didn't want to keep me around. I was becoming a better mother. I was just all around believing in myself. No matter what obstacles came, I handled them. I handled them. <laughs> So when I find with Jonathan, I ain't gonna lie, I low-key bagged him. He might tell y'all otherwise, but I bagged him. We might do a story time at some point about how we got together, but I bagged him. <laughs> but I pretty much, like, I'm not gonna lie, I gave him an ultimatum, like, I'm not just fucking no more. I'm not... You either gonna make me a girlfriend or what, what's up? And he was like, okay, give me a couple days. She said, what? 
No, but for real. <laughs> for a long time, I felt guilty about that. Like, I controlled him into being with me. That was an argument at some point in our relationship. But, yeah, I felt like I forced him into being with me. Because, shit, who is this man that I just love like this after two days? Like, God, this got to be my husband. It's what I've been praying for. It's what I've been hoping for. Ain't no way this ain't him. Like, period. I'm done dating. This him. I felt it. Like, this him. So, I wasn't playing no games. So, by me thinking that God had literally sent this man right when I asked, I felt like Jonathan had to be perfect. Like, he finna be the provider. He finna do this. We finna get pregnant right away. Like, literally. Right away. I was on that. Like, probably not a lot to him. But in my mind, as soon as I got a man, I had been wanting a kid for Kamaya. I was manifesting a sister or brother for her at three when she turned three. When I got with Jonathan, she turned four. So... No. When I got with Jonathan, she was just turning three. Now she's four, but like he literally watched my baby grow up. Like, but yeah, like when he first came around, not even when he first came around, up until him going to jail, literally. Um, I didn't really see him for him. I just saw him for what I expected him to be. And when he wasn't everything that I saw God I wanted him to be, I got confused in my head. When problems arose, arose risen, when problems came up, I got the doubt in it. I got to being like, man, this ain't the man for me. Ain't no way. This my husband. I got a video that I had posted about us and yeah, but it's basically, I was like, yeah, God, he ain't my soul, man. I doubted him being my soul, man, up until God told me, came to me, sat me down. Because you know what? I never in my life knew what love was, even while I was dating Jonathan, until... I lost him until I didn't have him anymore. And I know that's probably going to sound crazy to y'all. But if y'all didn't know, if you just stumbled upon this video, or if y'all already been watching and y'all do know, I have DID, Dissociative Identity Disorder. I switch. I have memory lapses. I forget shit. Jonathan is really the only person who, like, who get me and see me. Outside. He know more about it than me. He probably be knowing. He probably don't understand everything. But he know like he know what he see like he see. And sometimes I don't always have the memories of what he's done for me. Or how far we've come. Or how long we've even been together. Or some of the stuff we've like really gotten through together. A lot of the times, because I dissociate, because I dissociate, I only see him for where we are in that moment. And if where we are is mad, then that's all I see it as. I, all I see is disappointment for my expectations not being met. When from the beginning, I never really set any expectations. Like we literally just moved in together. I didn't ask him to provide. I didn't ask him to do anything for Kamaya. I didn't tell him. I did. I told him cheating was not an option. He didn't listen. <laughs> but God literally tested us at every single turn. And I've learned to really, really kind of speak my truth about what it is that I want because when you don't I feel like you kind of open yourself up to be walked all over like y'all heard that but and anything like 
I saw this reel on Instagram that was like, when you go to work and you work your best and you work hard, that don't get you nothing but more work. They see you working hard and they're going to pile the load on you because they know you're going to do it. But they're not going to give you no raise or they're not going to pour into you. They're not going to invest in you. So, you got to invest in you. And I wasn't doing that. I got with this man. And I figured, hey, God burn this man. This must be a a gift. I must be perfect. I must be the perfect wife. I must be deserving of this. I'm a good woman. Whole time, my man had silent expectations for me that I was not meeting. Because in my mind, I'm the perfect girlfriend. I'm cooking. I'm cleaning. I'm mm -mm -mm. But that was in my man's love language. Like, <clears throat> he had a lot of expectations. I had a lot of expectations. Neither one of us was really vocal about those in the beginning. It was like we had to teach each other our expectations of one another by fucking up, <laughs> by hurting each other, by being put in situations that God was really like, okay, I'm finna test y'all. I'm finna see. Y'all say y'all love each other, but I'm finna see. Because I'm telling you, like, love gets old. Like, love gets old. After a while, being with somebody, loving your parents, loving your friends, loving, loving people gets old. You can love a lot of people. Hell, you can love your first love. But... Partnership takes work. It takes dedication. It takes communication. And communicating your expectations in all your relationships in life helps you to live a, a less confusing life. Because when you set your standards high right away or when you set your standards at all or your boundaries right away... It leaves no room for people to keep fucking up in your life. Like, I already set the standards. I already told you what I require of you. Okay, I understand you messed up one time. Okay. I, I Like, you know, it's just kind of like, what are you willing to tolerate for your own happiness? Because a lot of times people don't even know what happiness is. A relationship don't necessarily bring you happiness. A best friend don't necessarily bring you happiness. Six figures don't necessarily bring you happiness. Getting pregnant, having a new baby don't necessarily bring you happiness. Getting your dream home and ownership of it don't necessarily bring you happiness. It don't bring you peace in that home. Happiness and peace comes from within. And a part of not speaking your expectations or not setting those boundaries is a part of making yourself small it's a part of keeping your voice quiet and I noticed that I felt that within my relationship space like I felt with my parents I felt unheard I felt unpaid attention to with um my man I felt unseen I felt un unappreciated because in my mind I'm doing all these things I'm doing all these things but I'm not getting what I desire because I'm constantly allowing things that I'm not okay with or I'm constantly lowering my standards to appease somebody else or other people like sometimes when I'm in a different neighborhood like when I'm in Glendale or Wawa's House or something like that like I turn my music down to appease other people I make myself small to appease other people in those moments when my standards are. If I'm around you, I want you to know me for who I am and me not have to dial myself back a little bit. Period. I don't want to have to dial myself back. And I noticed that I was, especially in the beginning, like, when me and Jonathan first got together, I told him, like, look, the first night he came over my house, I told him, like, look, I got a mental health disorder and uh, I be switching this shit, okay? And he just like, okay. Like he didn't really 
get it or expect he even told me like he just thought it was like girl okay but to recognize your imperfection and to see how somebody has loved you through your imperfection it kind of it makes you fall in love with them more like it makes you see their value more like speaking up for yourself and giving your person or your soul tribe your friends your family your boss the opportunity to accommodate you or to show you that they care about being in your life by executing living up to your standards like it's it's a freeing feeling it's a it's a good feeling you know when you got your people because people who don't who are not meant to be in your life they're not going to assimilate they're not going to they're not going to live up to your standards. Like, they're going to keep being the person that they are, expecting you to be okay, expecting you to stay the same person who was accepting that. And when your growth happens, you have to let it happen. Like, you got to flow with it. And if you're not okay with something, if you're not feeling something, even if you couldn't set your standard last week, set it today. If you couldn't set it yesterday, set it today. If you couldn't set it this morning, set it right now. Because the bar is getting higher and higher for our value and our self worth. Like, look how we are ascending. Look at all the knowledge that the knowledge that we're acquiring. The price is going up, KB. So get it while you can. Like, take take all the lessons that you can. Like, be your full self. Like, use your full voice. If you got a problem, if you feel like you want to say something, like, be that activist. Be that one person who's going to make change. Be that person who's going to let a motherfucker know, will you cheat, I'm not going to take you back. You know, like, or, <clears throat> okay, I'm going to walk out on this job. I don't care about if I'm going to be flat broke. I'm going to follow my dreams. You know, like, be that person who is living inside of you, who wants to kind of come out. Like, be the person who you see other people being and you be like dang i aspire to be like that be that person what you aspiring to be like that for when you you can you you that you that already i feel like it's definitely time to like just come into acceptance about the things that we want the things that we deserve and that we can make things happen we can make things happen we just got to have enough confidence to be like look i'm gonna speak on this i'm gonna say this i'm gonna do this i'm gonna make this happen like here here i am I can, I will, I must, I am. Period. I am conquering this. I will conquer this. I have conquered this. I did. I did it. Like, I did it. <laughs> but those silent expectations, that silent, like, just thinking people just like you, they grew up like you, they know what you want, they know how you want to be treated, they know how to treat you. Nah, you got to teach people how to treat you. And if you don't teach them, the world going to teach you both of y'all. Okay. But yeah, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and share this video on Facebook or whatever social media you have. But especially Facebook because I go live doing tarot readings over there. All right, y'all, I'm out of here. I'm full. I'm satisfied. <laughs> and I'm gonna go. Okay, I'm out of here, y'all.